with the new era of the transfer portal, I still think people are missing the point on some of them. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. And the everydayers know that we are joined by Auburn message board legend, Charlie Five, for a little Charlie Tuesday. There's been so much action over the last few weeks with Auburn kind of having this late run in the second transfer portal. And you've got kind of two groups of Auburn fans with all of this. And this is probably not specific to Auburn, but this is an Auburn show. It's an Auburn community. So that's the way we are going to address it. There's the folks that are excited, which are great. And then there's folks that pop up on my YouTube comments, pop up on Twitter, pop up everywhere that say, well, we need to quit acting like every time somebody is added and commits via the transfer portal, that there's some superstar. They're going to like change the offense or change the defense or change the scope of what Auburn football could be in 2023. And Charlie Five, I think those people, I think they're missing the point because it's not about getting a potential Heisman candidate. That'd be great. And we all hope Peyton Thorne could become that quarterback, but he's probably not. But it's about the roster getting better one step at a time. That's why it's worth getting excited about. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not where Auburn, unfortunately, is not in the position that you can go try to find that that first round uh, wide receiver that sure. that popped up that that, that all, that's literally the missing piece. We have a whole like ro- we had to have a whole roster upgrade. And then if you if you look at it as a collective, you can go position group by position group. And there's just there's not a, there's not like one position where Auburn did not get better. Uh, where they didn't need to get better, whether you're looking at linebackers, where you're looking at offense. I think there's one. I think there's one position. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, the rest we'll I think that. got better. Yep. But that that's the thing is is you look at who left and who came in, and it's it's not even a comparison. It's not even a comparison. You can look at their player rankings, their transfer portal rankings, pretty much across the board on all the different websites. Auburn got better in almost every single room. It's not just trying to get first round. Like we're not t- just talking about a whole lot of one done pro uh, NFL first round prospects. We're talking about a, a collectively as a group, competition wise. You cannot argue if you're trying to argue that you're just l- trying to find something to argue about. There is no discussion. Auburn got a lot better in both portal seasons, uh, and it's 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 not even up for debate anymore. It's not. It's not. And they added a lot. And they didn't really lose that much. I think they lost one player that would have contributed this year. And we'll touch on that position group in a second. But I think... I I just don't know if there's a trade that I would have had specifically with a second portal window. With like, okay, TJ Finley leaves and you get your quarterback, right? And and some people like Robbie more than Peyton Thor. Like, that's cool. But I guarantee you... 99% 99% of the people watching this show would prefer to have Peyton Thorne on the roster than TJ Finley. Like, that's not a debate, <laughs> a right? That's not a discussion. No, it's not even close. Yeah. Tarvarish Dawson versus the other receivers that we've added. Like, come on. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, right. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand the need to say, oh, yes, this guy's going to change the roster. Or like, I don't understand why we're acting like everybody. Or the new one is, Oh, Auburn added somebody at wide receiver that Deion Sanders didn't want. One, don't think that's true. Two, he's still like, let's assume your premise is correct. And it's not, but let's assume that it is. He's still better than several of the guys that are on this team. Correct. Correct. That's that's the point. The point is not that you got to get we got to get past the is this guy better than every other receiver in the SEC or every other receiver wherever. It's it's you get better by adding better players to your roster. So Auburn, Hook, Steve, uh, Hooks has a chance to be better Jay than yep. uh, yeah, better than Jay, uh, exactly better than most of the receivers. He's got physically more gifted than a lot of the receivers on the roster. So uh, I mean, there's really no there's really no argument about that. It's like stop it, stop thinking we're trying to get. 
you, the, the goal is to find the the next you know first round draft pick. Like we had to completely rebuild this roster. We added like tw- almost twenty dudes. Like think about that. Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. I mean, think about think about that. That is, I mean, quick math. That's like one fourth of the team almost. I mean, that it's inc- it's incredible. Uh, well, and, that, and you you would look at guys that actually played last year, and this 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 staff's going to rotate more than last year, but. There would be, you know, where I was kind of putting up the PFF grades at AuburnDaily.com, there'd be like 22 people that played on offense, 21 people that played on defense. And it's like, well, you added 21 transfers, and not all of those guys are going to play consistent, you know, snaps. I think most will. I think 15 of the 21 just lose math. I think they will. But then you also got 21, you got 21 high school kids slash JUCO kids coming in. I mean, you're talking about 41 or 42 newcomers coming in. And they've all got past the playing time, and some some are more instant than others. But it's just you talk about flipping the rosters; it's exactly what it looks like. So, well, this is the means talk. to the end. I mean, this was the next step of saying Hugh Freeze flipping the roster in two seasons. This is what it looked like. And look, I don't want to call a kid out, but I, I think I have to for this. Like Stephen Sings, like he's fine, right? Like he's not gonna. I don't think he's gonna get six or seven sacks this year. But you and I were talking about it the other day. He's better than Dylan Brooks. Like the roster got better with adding him. Exactly. That's the way. That's exactly what. And, and and it's it's hard not to say. Sometimes you're like, man, this guy just doesn't like super fire me up, or this doesn't super guy doesn't super inspire me. But it's like, hey, what went out and what came in? Bottom line, what went out yeah. at edge and what came in? Dylan Brooks went out. Steven Sings came in with six or seven career sacks. And Jaden Expe- McLeod. Yeah, experience. Uh, we got better. Period. Mm-hmm. Period. I mean, what? I mean, we may. This may be a topic you want to cover, but like, who would you trade back right now? It, that we lost. Who, yeah. Would you trade back? Who, like more than more than one person for across both portals. Sure. The, any any of it. Who? I think Jeffrey Emba and Mosiah Nasili Kite are close. That's the only one. I'm, and, and, and I, and and I'm I may be wrong sure, on that, and I'm not even sure that I would make that trade. But uh, but but yeah. I, I mean, I can't think of I cannot. I really, really, I'm not just trying to be a sunshine pumper. I, I legitimately can't think of one where I was like, I'm just like dad gum, man. I w- I would like to have I would like to have him back over what was brought in. I I, I can't think of one. Let me ask you this: What about safety? Because you lose Craig McDonald and you didn't get another safety. Your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we looked at that and, and, and that was a position where Hugh called it by like called it out specifically that yeah. and, and pretty much every time every other time he did that, he added someone. Um so so maybe maybe it's it's a it's a maybe that could be a weak spot that we didn't necessarily get better, but it may just be like, hey, was was what is out there that could we not is what was out there better than what we could move people around and and, and scheme based off what we have to, to mm-hmm. make work? I, it it could have been it, it could have been that scenario. There just wasn't, especially in the second half. There just it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of big time guys that that popped. I think the Tulane guy, um, the green Tulane, not the gold Tulane. Yeah, uh, not Tulsa. Yeah, uh, he. I think he. Did we get put, two we, offensive linemen from Tulane? Yeah, we got. Yeah, the Tulane uh, Golden Hurricanes. <laughs> oh. oh boy, that's that's yeah. a joke that will live forever. Um, uh, I'm okay with that. I'm yeah, okay. probably probably safety is about the only place where you could say, hmm, right? We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Just because you only had things leave and you didn't have anything come in, right? And and I thought for a second was Cyrus Dumas the the New Mexico State transfer. I guess the the latest transfer. I was like, okay, well, where did he line up at at New Mexico State? And, like, could he play safety? Because, I mean, if you played slot corner, you could play safety for the most part. And he was a wide corner on, like, almost everything. So, yeah, I think he's going to play corner. But, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the safety room. Because I know early in spring, McDonald was getting, like, reps with the ones. And, of course, we didn't see that in A-Day, right? Which right. I also think is the coaching staff sending a message to the players about where you're at. So, um, but yeah, I, let's talk more specifically. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit more. Put two fingers on the phone. We're going to zoom in just a yep. smidge. Talk about how Auburn improved. No, don't don't touch your screen, Charlie Five. 
Your internet's hanging on by a thread anyway. But we'll touch on that in just a second. Right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Charlie Five, you know this. I know this. It is so easy to make money at FanDuel because all you have to do is pound the over. Auburn, six and a half wins? Slap it. Slap the stew we, out of it, man. We can't. We hey, we had to come back on this episode last year, remember? So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the same thing last year, but still, yeah, slap and, the over. Hey, we're gonna do it every year, and that's yep. okay. That's okay because we're bugging. But here's the thing: even like if we do have to come back, if you if you're a first time better on FanDuel, you'll get your no sweat first bet, no and you'll sweat. get up to a thousand dollars back. Like there's no, not one drop of sweat. No. No, can you imagine sweating betting for the first time on FanDuel? No, because the first oh, nobody's one ever done it. Doesn't, doesn't require exist. that. So head over to <laughs> you could do it if you wanted to. Head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. You know what? I want you to do it and try to sweat and tweet at me if you're able to sweat. You. I'll do it. I dare you. I dare Dicks you. Tag FanDuel happen. in it too. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, Charlie Five, we kind of already mentioned a few of these. How Auburn got better. Just for the folks that are still like, no, no, all of these group of five guys don't make you better, whatever. So let's start at quarterback. Sure. We already talked about this. TJ Finley out, Peyton Thorne in. We good there? Huge win. I think Huge we're good win. there. I think we're good there. Tight end, you bring in Rivaldo Fairweather. Didn't really lose anybody other than Shanker to the NFL. Story. We're good there, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, sort of, whatever. Uh, receiver, you lose Tavares Dawson, which I think some people liked. I was a little surprised how he kind of got phased out throughout spring, but he did. He got phased out throughout yep. spring. I talked about it recapping some of those. You see them, they do their three deep, and it's like Tavares is still just standing on the sideline. What's up with that? He's out. They bring in a bunch of receivers. Now, the interesting thing about this, the interesting thing about this is you lose Tavares Dawson, who was one of the, like 10 slot guys that were on the roster, and then they bring in a bunch of outside guys, and which is fun, and, and a slot guy, right? right. Burton's a slot guy, but, but yeah, shorter and hooks, both outside guys. So Martin, I think that outside guy, Martiner, sure, good point. Yes, I good mean war, the war report set has has made this point, and I think this is very very true that it's clear on the outside that Hugh Freeze has a type. Uh, that he likes. He likes big. big guys. He wants physical guys. He wants his Laquan Treadwell type tight wide receivers, you know, 6'2 plus 200 ish sure. uh, physical. And he went out and got three of those. He went out and got three outside dudes. And then you got Burton, who was incredibly highly rated. I, I mean, you could probably call him and and maybe Tavares Dawson a, a wash, possibly. I, 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 I still possibly. think he he probably he's got more more years left, and he was you know much highly re, uh, recruited in a wide receiver room that is just unbelievable. So I'll take their I'll take a walk on from Ohio State. So it's hard to look at the wide receiver room and at least say competition get, didn't just get way better, way I'm you, better. I'm with you. I don't I don't know how it doesn't get better. Also surprised more guys didn't leave from the receiver room. I think uh, yeah. next year you're going to see a ton of receivers leave. Sure, sure. You forgot, and you forgot Landon King also left that room. So Landon King and Tavares Dawson, and you kind of replay, even though Landon King, bless his heart, didn't really have a home, uh, a, a good home in the tight end or the wide receiver room. But, but yeah, the yeah. previous staff did him wrong, which is a shame. Big time. Big time. Hopefully he finds something in Colorado. We'll see. Utah. Utah. That's what I meant. Same colors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not really. Colorado, Utah, Tulane, Tulane, Tulsa, whatever. If it's Same outside of the SEC, it just doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah, whatever. All right, so that's an offensive line we're not going to talk about because that's just yeah. Yeah, four, four new starters basically. So I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I even, mean, even if Muskrat doesn't start this year, he will start next year. Like exactly. Yeah, exactly. Get over, get over here with that. So okay, so on the defensive side of the ball. The only one where I'm like, the only position group where I'm like, eh, is strong side defensive end. Okay. But, I mean, Mosiah's is good. Yeah, I mean, he's I, a I'm just kind of thinking, like, it, I guess it just depends where our starting point is. Is our starting point from when Hughes was, uh, Hugh Freeze was hired, or is our starting point, like, the second portal? Because yeah. 
I wanted both of them, right? Because that's what we saw during spring, and I thought that that was going to be some kind of cool rotation. Jeffrey Inbaugh did not think so. <laughs> that is why right, he left. Right. But but I, I think the ability to move Messiah more places, I think they feel more comfortable putting Messiah and Asili Kite in more spots than Jeffrey Inbaugh, so that's certainly valuable. But I just loved Inbaugh's upside, and I know a lot of people did too, but yeah, it is what it is. But the defensive line as a whole is still better. If your starting point is when Hugh Freeze got hired, you lose Emba, lose to Becky Acoli, and it's like, okay, well, you, you bring in, you know, Lawrence Johnson, who's a key depth. Uh, I think he's going to be a solid depth piece. Uh, you know, Messiah. Um, Justin Rogers. Justin Rogers, who's going to be a starter probably next to Jason. So, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 clearly, it's clearly a better room. Sure, sure. And then you, you can't forget uh, Keldrick Falk, who was not a part of – I mean, I know we're talking transfer portal. But yeah. Like, that's another guy that, that got added to the roster that made it better. Good point. Um, uh, Wilkie denied – we, we hung on – held – like, kept his commitment throughout the – I mean, the defensive line, I feel like, got much better, and you really only lost, you know – what one guy that 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 played sparingly, and then one guy that we're, we were not sure was a real person until he went into the portal. We heard about him. Acoli, yeah, yeah. We're, I was just happy to know that he's a real person. So, so who's more yeah. real, Acoli or JJ Evans? Acoli. I mean, <laughs> what have you done for me lately? <laughs> Has JJ JJ Evans hasn't committed anywhere? I don't think. I, I, it, it, where did he go? I have no idea. Well, is he even real? Like, can he command somewhere? Who knows? Who knows? Could be a glitch. Uh, uh linebackers pretty straightforward. That's another group where I'm like, I'm shocked nobody else entered. Can you imagine? Well, there was no one. There's no one to enter. <laughs> You're, <laughs> You're really... surprised. I- I'm surprised Cam Riley's still here, if I'm being honest with you. I don't I... know how you could because he was a starter, he was tabbed to be the starter, and they go out and get like <laughs> they go out and get all these guys to play in front of them. And he doesn't ever seem like he was consistently with the ones even in practice. Like, but think about if you don't think about if these guys don't come in, what your linebacker room is. Oh, I'm, I get why they went and got to. Holy I'm not cow! That. It's Cam, I'm just saying. It's, I'm just saying. I'm surprised Cam Riley's still here. That's all. I'm. I'm going to be shocked if he doesn't. I. I think. I think he's going to still. I think he's going to still find a way on the field. He's just too freakishly freakish to st- just to keep him off the field. I do know you remember he- when we did that segment on it, like, could he legitimately fight a bear? Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. He I retweeted think- that. That was funny. I still think he can. <laughs> I think he could too. I'm taking him over the bear. Anytime. Plus two fifty on FanDuel. Take Cam Riley. No sweat. First. <laughs> <laughs> um, Linebacker room is probably my favorite room now uh, of the, of the port, like portal editions. I, no, I just, it's not. I no, love, it's not. I absolutely. Why? What do you mean? Why? Why is you linebacker got, your favorite room? Because of all the different options and like different style of guys in that room. You got uh, Larry Nixon, who was like conference all uh, U, uh, all conference USA, a hundred tackles, uh, and, and a guy that I feel go in like, order, go in order from number one linebacker to fourth. Of or my fifth favorite of my no, favorite. No, of like who do you think is going to be the number one linebacker and so on. See, the thing is, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, there's so many options now. There's so many guys that, that I, because the competition is wrenched up, like, all of a sudden we started hearing Robert Woodyard's name, like, pop up and, like, ready ready to go. Like, there's there's well, like – Robert Woodyard could be better than all of them. It's just, exactly. is he better than them right now? Right, right. Uh, I love Keys. I love his body, like, body type. I love big, long linebackers. Uh, he's probably – I don't even know if he'll – I don't know. Whose body he, do you love more? Keys mm. or <laughs> Cam, Cam Riley. Riley. Cam Riley. <laughs> I'm gonna still stick with my boy Cam from okay, got it from the same, close to the same area. But man, I, I there there's some there's some hulking dudes in that room, I, and I, and I just I like the transformation of that room. I think that room offensive that room and offensive line. It's very it's crazy yeah. how those Changed two it. rooms changed. You flipped it. Yeah, flipped. you flipped it. And like neither neither group really had a bunch of guys leave. They're no. all just pieces that left. Because like, I'm saying I'm telling you, did a linebacker leave? Actually, Desmond Tizzle. Desmond Tizzle's the only That's one. That's right. I think. And then uh, Cam, uh, Cam Brown left. Cam Brown, yeah, that's true. Like, that's is he true. real? Is he like I don't know? Yeah, yeah. He left like two weeks into spring. So, he left uh, and then and then corner. 
you didn't lose anybody that really mattered. And then you, you brought in, you brought in the transfer at the, the last second there. So yeah. Yeah. So all, all the folks that are like, okay, the, you know, you're, you're bringing in these little small school guys and like, you know, these guys aren't superstars. You're right. Most of them aren't going to be superstars. None of them may be superstars, but they all make the roster better for different reasons. So let's yes. all kind of keep that in perspective. And if you're an Auburn fan, that's tired of hearing that and you've got that weird, annoying dude down the hall from you at work that keeps bringing up negative energy. Just play this podcast for him. Go, go, for him. go position by position and, and, and dare, defy them to show how Auburn didn't get better. Make them not want to talk to you ever again. Yeah. Be Roast rude. them. Be rude. Just yeah. go ahead. Be, be a little, be go a little too far with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Who lost playing over. time this weekend with the addition of the three new transfers? We discussed this in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked on Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Charlie Five, I think some guys lost playing time this weekend with the addition of Shane Hooks, with the addition of Cyrus Dumas, and with the addition of... Who was the third one? Oh my gosh. Sings. Steven Sings. Steven Sings. There we yeah. go. I'm singing. All right. So who do you think lost reps? I, I, I think Brenton Williams, the freshman, I think he lost reps because he was the fourth Jack slash edge. And he is now the fifth, I believe, with Steven Sings coming in. So that is that's the no brainer one for me. Yeah, and, and that's probably not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for uh, a true freshman. Mm -hmm. To to be the one that that's sort of the odd man out, possibly red shirt, transform your body a little bit, uh, work on becoming a little bit more of a hulking super teen. He already looks really good in pads, but now yeah. he you know he went, may not be relied upon so much early. I agree with that one. I got this weird. Explain to me this, Zach. So oh, no. are you about to do it? Yeah, I I got I got a lot of quest questions right now about what's going on with Cam Brown, like. Yeah, you, you bring in Mardner, who's an outside guy in the first mm -hmm. portal, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. You want you want to you got Cam Brown's locked down on one side. Sure, let's figure something out on the other side. We go get a six six guy, mix it in, see what happens, and then spring rolls around, and then you go get two more outside guys mm -hmm. along with uh, along with Mardner. And it's like, wait a minute, hold on, who who's the odd man out here? Who's the odd man out here? Because, I mean, I feel like Shorter is playing. Shorter could be our best receiver next year. If Shorter's uh, healthy, I think he's our best receiver on the roster. And then you got Shane Hooks, who – He could be is, a daddy. I he mean, is he, freakish. He, he, just, he can moss, mo moss some folks, yeah. He is freakish, and uh, he lets you know about it, mm -hmm. apparently. So, so who's the odd man out here? Like, I'm I mean, his name's to, Hollywood. Hollywood yes. Hooks? Like, you're telling me he's not going to play? What? Yeah. So it, I mean, what's the deal? What's the deal with Cam? What's the deal with Cam Brown? I mean, so I, he, I didn't know we were going here, but you and I've yeah. talked about this before. So we all like watched a day and really yeah. broke down like who was with the ones, who was with the twos, who like was with the threes or lower. And like Cam Brown played with the twos, and we all kind of ignored it. Yeah, we like just pretend like that didn't. Happen. And I've mentioned to some of my friends, and they're like, "Well, he was battling injuries." And I'm like, "Well, if he was bad." injuries and like that was really a concern i don't think they would have played them so I, and I, I told you there's a difference there's a difference in being hurt and being injured sure you can play at a high level hurt if you want to and if you're injured you can't play okay so he may have been hurt but it was he was not it, it, it was he was not for like running with the ones at all uh and i know you can't tell a ton by by the weather and the and the style of play that was happening, but right, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. At the end of the spring, he, he was real hot at the beginning of spring, and then as the spring rolled on, it's like he started to fade. Uh, and and then you go bring in two more outside guys after you already brought in Mardner. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's and it could just be thin, right? It could just be thin, yeah. and they're trying to get other dudes that can stretch the field. Like, that's cool. That makes sense as well, but. It is odd. It only, is odd. Only so many can play on the field at the same time. So, I, sure, that's true. I'm just, I'm just saying something. I mean, something, something's up there. Yeah. I don't know what yeah, it could be, but that's going to make some people mad. 
It you might. ready for it? Yeah. And, and, but it is what it is. It, no, it, I, it, I think it's a good question. I think it's a good question. All right, so that was hooks. And, and then with corner... Does adding a corner impact J.D. Rim at all? You know, he missed most of spring so. due to an injury. Like, I think Rim's better than him, right? Yeah, don't I you don't think, think Rim's better than this kid. I Dumas? think so too. Dumas? I think so too. I, just from he, it, that's sort of a weird add too because I don't think. That, I mean, how much time does Dumas have left? I think he's got two, two years. So, are you expecting to maybe? I, I don't. Could he be really a number know. three corner next year when? Some guys possibly go to the league, maybe. Could he play a, a little nickel? Possibly, I I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't he know. did it in New Mexico State. That was one of the things I was looking at. It's like, could he could he do that? And strictly he, an outside guy. I mean, he didn't. That doesn't mean he can't, but he just didn't. Right. He wasn't asked to. So, I don't know. I don't really know how that plays out. But, um, yeah, I, I think, I think as far as the corner pecking order, I still think JD Rim is ahead of him, and of course CJ James, Nehemiah Pritchett, Kane Lee, and Keontae Scott are all in front of him. So sure. Sure. Charlie probably, five. Go ahead. If people want to yell at you about your Camden Brown take, how do they do that? Uh, yell at me on Twitter in all caps. Uh, you can find me at the underscore Charlie underscore five uh, on the locked on Auburn discord every single day, the Auburn live, the corner message board, and then mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the dad bod golf pod. You can find all my written work at auburndaily.com, And we will see you tomorrow. This has been locked on Auburn.